What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna cover five portrait editing techniques that you can use in the new version of Capture One 21 to improve your portrait editing. Throughout this tutorial, I'm gonna be working with three different images and I'm gonna be utilizing different techniques in Capture One 20, especially the new one, which is my favorite feature in Capture One 21, which is style brushes, as well as a deep dive into masks, the color editor, HDR, and of course, layers. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe because I post a lot of photography educational content from Capture One all the way to Photoshop full editorials, skin retouching. So on this channel, it's full of educational content and I usually provide raw files for you. So for this tutorial, look in the description, you'll see a raw file so that you guys can follow along with me. So now let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. For this first image, I want to emphasize the new feature style brushes in Capture One 21. And this one is super beneficial because it's really going to help speed up the process in Capture One 20. Before, it took about one to four steps to create this effect. Now I can save this as a preset and now I can quickly brush in this effect. So let's talk about style brushes and how it works. So the way it works is that basically you set up a layer. So all I did is I went here, hit the plus button, new field adjustment layer. And then I'm specifically looking and I'm targeting the sky in the background. Yes, I know the subject looks terrible. The contrast is completely nothing that I would want on the subject, but I'm specifically looking at how the sky and the water looks. So on this layer, what I did is I'm adjusting things like contrast, highlights, and the whites. I'm also going into the color editor, like the oranges to really bring out that saturation, the blues, trying to make it a little bit more deeper at, with the lightness even going into the highlights on the color balance and then also going into the clarity and the structure, okay? So basically the way the style brushes work is that I already know that I wanna brush in that effect specifically on the sky. I don't want it on the subject, but I want this preset to be saved. So every single time, let's say I have another photo from this series or I do a photo shoot two weeks from now and I want that exact same effect and dramatic sky effect, I can have that now saved with all of these presets. I can go in and quickly brush it in and Capture One will automatically make it a new layer. So one of the things I can do, once I have that layer already set up, I'm gonna right click and I wanna do something called Save Adjustments as Style Brush. But before I do that, it's very important to set up your brush settings as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push B on the keyboard or you can come up here to the brush tool and I wanna right click and I wanna make sure that these settings that I have here are what I want every time I brush it in because it's gonna save also when I save that style brush, it's gonna save the flow opacity and all of the stuff that you see here. So for this brush, I know about 70% flow is gonna work for me for this effect, 100% opacity, the hardness at zero, and auto mask. That I do want that on because it's gonna help me with automatically detecting the edges, especially being the subject. So I'm gonna leave my settings as is. Now your settings might be different depending on what kind of style brush you're creating. So once I make sure that my brush is set up, now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go right here to save adjustment as style brush. You're gonna notice that it's gonna check mark every single adjustment that I've made over here in my adjustments, as well as the brush settings. And that's why I told you it was important. Make sure you have the auto mask, if that's something that you want, the flow opacity, make sure all that stuff is set up. So that once I hit save, it's going to save all of those settings. And I'm just gonna name this sky pop and then two, two, two. Okay, this is just for an example, I hit save and it's done. So I'm gonna delete this layer because I was just to show you how to set up the style brush and how to save it. So let's say for example, this is a new image. I want to apply that effect that I've just saved. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the style brush section right here. I'm gonna hit this drop down arrow. Keep in mind that my interface has been a, a custom uh, set up. So I do have one that's custom built for mine. So if you're looking at mine and be like, yo, Eli, mine doesn't look like yours. It's because I love to have all my panels all on the left side. I don't like to be switching through all these different tabs. So you can set up yours um, like this if you want. All you got to do is right click. And then I believe it is add a tool tab and a custom tool tab right here. Okay. So with that said is now I'm going to go to sky pop. So when I click this, you see the check mark now. And now all I need to do is all I need to do now is just brush. And that effect now that I set up is being applied to wherever I brush. And what's great about this 
is because I saved this as a style brush, I can work with any image from now on and use this effect and opposed to making a new layer and setting up everything from scratch, this is going to help speed up my process. And there's so many different ways you can go about these style brushes. In a moment, you're going to see that I've made a specific style brush for Dodge. Even though Capture One does already have a preset for Dodge, there are specific settings that I would rather have and I want to customly set up myself that I'm going to assign. So what I'm going to do here is obviously I'm going to brush this in. I'm just going to make sure that it's only brushed in on the background. So I'm going to speed up this process right now. And then we'll continue going into the Dodge and the other features. So as I'm working on this image, you'll see that I can just push M on the keyboard. M will show me the mask. It'll show me basically what's in red is where that effect is showing the things like the structure, the clarity that I set up when I made my style brush and areas that are not red are not being affected. So if I push E on the keyboard, I get the eraser tool and I can erase it here on the arm. And there we go. So that should be good enough. I think you guys get the point here. I'm going to push M. And so automatically the sky pop effect is now being added. Now, if I feel like I went too far and maybe it doesn't look as good as I would want, I can always lower the opacity because it's on its own layer. I can lower the opacity. I'll set mine to 80. Now, another style brush that I did set up was a dodge. And so just like I did on step one, basically all I did in this case is I just use my curves to make that adjustment. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to start brushing with curves. And this effect is just going to slowly, gradually brush in some exposure here. And if I push M on the keyboard, you'll see that what's in red is where this dodge is being affected. And if you're wondering, well, what is dodge, Eli? Well, dodge, what this is going to do is wherever I'm brushing right now, is that it's lightening up those specific areas. So it's adding just a little bit of exposure to brighten it up. Because if I looked at it before I did the dodge, you'll see that the face is a little bit dark. Even though I added my strobe light, I sculpted the light the way I wanted, it's still maybe not as bright as I would like. So I'm adding this dodge. And the way I made this dodge is that I just raised up the curves just like I would in Photoshop. So opposed to Camera Raw and Lightroom, their dodge, the way it works, is that it's going to increase the exposure. It doesn't give you the ability to go into curves or levels and make those as custom brushes. You're restricted to only certain settings. And that's what I like about Capture One. It gives you that flexibility. Okay. Now, keep in mind, if you don't want to make your own custom style brushes, if you go here to style brushes, you'll also see built in style brushes and Capture One already has options for you. And you'll see here it says Dodge Brighten. It says Highlights Brighten, Shadows Darken. So keep in mind, you do have some options here that you can also play around with. So already with those two effects, you'll see that we've drastically have changed the look of the image. So what I also want to do here is I already have two layers set up. Now I want to start working with the radial masks. And what I want to do here is I want to draw more attention to the subject. I want to darken up the uh, parts around the subject so that the brighter areas is right on Ruth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the draw radial gradient mask. I'm going to click and I'm going to set this up. Now I am going to undo that. So I'm going to press control Z. I did make a mistake. I did need to make a new field adjustment layer. So I'm going to go new field adjustment layer. And now I'm going to draw this mask. There we go. Okay. And what I want to do now is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to lower the exposure. And y'all, what you'll notice that it's doing it to the inside of my circle. So if I want the opposite, what I'll need to do is I'll go to this layer. I'll right click and then invert mask. So it'll do the opposite now. So what I want to do now is I want to darken the outside so that Ruth is nice and bright and the areas around it are dark. So when I push M on the keyboard, I want M on the keyboard so that I can see exactly where this effect is showing up. So I specifically just want it to be bright right around where Ruth is at. 
and I'm just using these lines around this circle to really refine and feather this effect, right? And so when I push M again, it'll take that off. And now when I click the before and after, you'll see that I've darkened this up and now our eyes are drawn to Ruth a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna also double click here and I'm just gonna name this radial. And then for this last one, for this specific photo, I'm gonna add another adjustment. So I'm gonna hold this little plus, new field adjustment layer. And I'm also gonna do draw linear gradient. So when I click and drag up, okay, and as you click and drag, by the way, I'm going to undo that. If you want to see what the mask looks like, if you come up here to capture one, I can click right here. You'll see it says never display mask. I can click right here. It says only display mask when drawing. So I'm going to want that on. When I click and drag, you'll see that it's displaying as I draw this up. So I'm going to go right about here. And what I want to do is I also want to darken this up just a little bit right about there to once again draw a little bit more of our attention to Ruth here. So I'm gonna name this one Linear. There we go. And then I'm gonna come back to the Dodge layer. I'm gonna come back to the brush tool and I'm gonna brush in just a little bit more on this area right here. I do want a little bit more detail to come back. And so there we go. So if we take a look this is the before, and then this is the after using the style brushes, using the dodge, and using the radial gradient to help improve the image. On this next image, we're gonna focus on the ACR settings and turning those into a style brush as well as the color editor. So if we take a look at this image, I've already set up some layers already. We've did the dodge um, layer, just adding a little bit of exposure to the subject, just like what we did on step one with Ruth. Then I added a levels adjustment just to brighten it up just a little bit, and then the color balance, just a little bit of color grading to the image. Now, if we look at the image, you'll notice that my specific style, which is the high-speed sync portraits, the background typically will just go to pure black, and I'll crush those blacks because I'm exposing for the sky. And why I love Capture One is the HDR slider helps bring back that detail in the blacks and in the shadows. So what I did is I made a custom style brush. So if I come over here, you'll see it says HDR shadows. And if I add this brush, I can simply just brush this in and automatically I start bringing back all of this awesome detail that you normally wouldn't see. So back here, you'll notice that it wasn't even, you didn't even see any of the greens. It was just pure black. And with this HDR sliders, and I'm gonna show you in a moment how I made this brush. We made it just like we did with Ruth, is I bring up the blacks and the shadows and I made this a custom brush to help me save time because a lot of my images, the blacks get crushed. I can simply use, use this style brush, brush this in, and then I'm ready to move on and add the color grading here in Capture One. So if I hit this check mark, this is the before and this is the after. This is all of the details that I brought back in the image using the HDR. So just to recap on how I set this brush up is that I went to the high dynamic range and I came into the shadows and the blacks. So I put them at 25 and 40. And remember that the brush settings, I need to make sure I save them. We, on this one, I did 70 and 100% flow. And so now that I have that as a style brush, I can basically just come in here and any image that I want and start brushing that in, okay? So the next thing that I also saw in this image, now that we've already added all the detail back in the background is that the oranges, I see that there's a possibility to really bring out that saturation. And so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer. So I'm going to go right here, hit the plus. And we're going to do new field adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to the color editor. And I'm going to specifically select the oranges, which is this area back here. And what I want to do is I'm going to bring up the saturation. And what you'll notice when I bring up the saturation, it's also doing it on the skin tones. And we're going to fix that in a moment. So what I want to do is first, I want to figure out how much saturation I want on that background. So around 41.3 looks great. And if I push M on the keyboard, because I did the new field adjustment layer, remember that it's doing this effect to the entire image. And as you can see here with the layer mask, it's all red. So it's okay. All I need to do is I just need to push E on the keyboard to get the eraser. And if I right click, I'm gonna turn off auto mask. 
I'm going to make sure my flow is up. Let's put it maybe like an 85, hardness zero. And I'm going to start erasing it from the subject because we don't want these oranges, the saturation to come up because it is making it look terrible. And so now I'm just going to make sure I'm actually, it looks like it added oranges to this little area down here on the cement. So I'm going to make sure I take that off as well. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to push M on the keyboard just to make sure that I'm erasing areas that I want. There we go. And so already real quick, we've been able to bring up the saturation in the sky, bring back all of the details in the background using the style brushes with HDR. And so let's take a look at the overall image. I'm going to name this just so we stay nice and organized. I'm going to name it color editor orange. I hit this check mark, brought all those oranges in the background sky. Let's take a look at the detail here in the HDR shadows. So without it, this is what it looked like. And this is bringing back all that detail. And let's take a look at the overall before and then the after. On this last image, I want to focus on the color editor. And here I was using color gels. And you can see I went a little bit too far. I got a little bit too much of the skin. So we're going to use the color editor to kind of tone down all the pinks that got on the skin tone. So looking at the image, I've already set up my layers here. We're not going to cover everything because I just want to focus on the face here. So right here, you can see the color gels went a little bit too far here. So if I hit the before and then the after, let's take a look at the before and after what I've done so far. Not too much. OK. But on this image, what I really want to focus on is this area right here. So we're going to use the color editor to our advantage. So I'm going to hit the plus icon. I'm going to go new field adjustment layer. And what I want to do is I want to go to the advanced section. And the reason why I want to go to the advanced is that I specifically want to use this little pick color correction option. And I want to select this specific pink or magenta color. So when I click this, what I'm going to do is that I can specifically hit this view selected color range, it's going to show me which color I've selected. And that's perfect. I got all of those pink gels that I used for that second strobe that went a little bit too far. So I know that I have that selected. And if I want to be able to get a little bit more range, you notice that I can use this smooth. And if you pay attention to this little color wheel, you'll see that the colors start to spread out a little bit more. So I'm going to get a little bit more of that selection. So I'm going to go about 28.6. And what I also want to focus on is the actual hue of this color. Because I have that pink selected, I can change the hue. And I want to start changing it to look similar to the skin tone. So I'm going to go about 5.1. So I'm changing the magentas a little bit to the same kind of tone of the colors. Now, the saturation, this is one that I definitely want to desaturate. This pink is a little bit too strong for my taste, right? I want to kind of really reduce that effect of the the colored gels that I use because I did mess up there. So there you're starting to see that it's starting to kind of dissipate a little bit. And then the lightness will go about, eh, let's go about 2.9. So if I zoom out, once again, you'll see that because I selected all the pinks, well, there's a lot of pinks here. We have the top, we even have like the little arcade back here. So what I want to do is I want to clear this mask. So by clearing the mask, it's not showing up anywhere. I'm going to get the brush to one. I'm going to specifically brush on the face. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to zoom in, pushing Control Plus to zoom in, holding the space bar. And now I'm going to specifically brush on the face just to reduce those pinks a little bit. So if I zoom out now, you'll notice that if I hit the check mark before and after, I've reduced it enough where it's not as, you know, it doesn't stand out as much. And I can still adjust it a little bit more. So when I went into Photoshop, this is where I went into with frequency separation. And I just smooth it out just a little bit. And if you're curious about frequency separation and you're curious as to how I do further steps, now that I've shown you like my beginning process in Capture One, what does the process now look like going into Photoshop? I have 10 full edit tutorials where we cover everything, dodge and burn, frequency separation, and color grading with raw files. So now, ladies and gentlemen, is a good time to subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. And let me know in the comment section which editing technique that you found most useful. And how are you guys going to use the style brushes to your advantage in Capture 121? See you guys on the next one.